Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you this evening. We are working on this Gottlieb Street Fighter pinball machine, Street Fighter 2. If you didn't see our first video, we worked on the lamps, got some of that working. We fixed these beautiful LEDs here on the, on the, uh, the apron. We got some flashers working. We looked all through the thing to see what was going on. And uh, now we've got a lot more work that we need to do on it. We've got to work on this spinning flipper up here at the top that isn't doing its thing. It's not spinning. A spinning flipper should spin, people. It's not spinning. And we need to work on, uh, there's a, a switch problem in the game where uh, several of the switches lock on. So we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, and uh, we'll just go through it and see what we can get into. So... Uh, I think maybe we'll put it in test mode and go check out uh, the switch test and just see what the issue is with that. Track that down. That's probably going to be a pretty uh, big problem to figure out. And this will be a good video to find it on. So uh, if you haven't subscribed to us already, make sure to. We put up new videos constantly of arcade games and pinball machines that we're working on. And uh, uh, let's get into it. Okay, folks. So I'm in the test mode. And I've got the play field up so I can mess with the switches. We haven't got to the sound test yet. <laughs> um, we've basically been in the lamp test, went through the solenoid test, now we're in the switch test. This is what he was saying. So it's, it's, it's showing that an entire line of switches are on. The tournament and the car hit switches, and then a bunch of spares, which basically means they're not used. Okay, so the tournament switch is actually this little switch on this little test board okay so one thing you can do whenever it's doing something like this he's already put a brand new uh, driver board in it is you can unplug some of the switches that are doing its thing so for instance the car switch is this one right here right so if I unplug that switch That stopped it dead in its tracks. Now, why did that stop it? It's because the way this test is ran, it basically, the last switch that was triggered, it uh, shows on the screen. So if I hit another one now, right out lane, we don't have a problem anymore. Okay, so that's one thing. And if you notice, so this is like the left top uh, hole or whatever it's called. If I hit it, so I'm holding it in, we get the same issue. So now it's showing that whole column is shorted. 3, 13, 23, 33, 43, 53, 63. Okay. Bottom left up kicker. Coin shoot number four. And top left hole. I'm holding down the top left hole switch. So why would it do that? So I let go of it and it stopped it. Why would it do that? Now if I hit another one, so this is like another left out lane. Everything seems to be working fine. As a matter of fact, it seems like all of the switches are working fine. So whenever it's cycling through of them, why would it do that? That to me seems like a diode problem. So we're going to check that out. All of these switches need a uh, diode on them because it's a matrix. So they, if you don't have a, if a diode is shorted or you don't have a diode on the matrix, it'll do stuff like that where like the entire line is locked on or it'll say that this is messed up, this is messed up. So different companies handled it different ways. The way that Gottlieb did it was they put all of their diodes on a board. I think it's this one. Does that say diode board on it? I believe it does. That says diode board. So this board right here has all of the diodes for all of the switches on it. Now, if some of those diodes are bad, I think it would make it do something funky with the switches like it's doing right now. Um, it, you know, it could, this would probably be the first thing to check, but it could be the driver board too. But since he put a brand new one in it, I'd uh, knock on plywood. 
Hopefully there's nothing wrong with that driver board. So I'm going to I'm gonna turn the game off. If you're That's another thing. If you're messing with switches and matrices and stuff, you don't really want to unplug connectors uh, while the game is on. Now, you saw me unplug a switch, but I'm just disconnecting one switch. You don't want to, like, you wouldn't want to unplug this entire diode board. That might cause issues. I don't know that it would, but don't test it, right? So I'm going to turn the game off. We're going to unplug that board, put it on the bench, and see if we can figure anything out. Um, on that board. Maybe we can test those diodes and see if we can find any bad ones. So this is the switch matrix. Now this all looks super confusing and everything. It's not as confusing as it looks because you, just like everything else you just need to break it down in the smaller pieces, right? So where is our problem? Our problem is right here. Okay. Tournament switch 5 and the car hit switch. Now if I unplug the car hit switch we don't have a problem anymore. I think that's because the ball is sitting on the car hit switch whenever I've got the play field up in the air or something like that. There's something going on. Okay. So if you look at the schematics, it says 1A17. See that? 1A17, 1A17, 1A17. And then this says 2A17, but none of those are used. Down here we've got A13, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so this 1A17 is this board. So it says A17, and it says P1 and P2. Diode board. So P1, pin 1, is the wire coming in. That's the strobe line, and then it connects to a whole bunch of diodes on the board on P1. All right, so the strobe line comes in and it goes through a resistor. Comes in, goes through this resistor, and then it connects to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight diodes. All right, so it comes in, goes through a resistor, connects to eight diodes. Okay, and the uh, tournament switch was the one that was saying something. Diode 7 or pin 7 coming back off of that connector goes to it. The tournament switch, right? And then this is P1 again. Same thing. Connects to 8 diodes and the car hit switch. It's the 7th diode in a row but they're calling it 16 because it's pin number 16 on this connector. So A1, P1. I'm thinking there's going to be a problem on here. One of these diodes, probably the one actually on the car switch, but we'll see. Hopefully. I mean, I might be wrong, but we'll see. And then um, the other one that was the, wasn't it the bottom left up kicker? Yeah, it was the, the ones that were three. So the bottom left up kicker and the left hole were also doing it. So it was locking all these ones on, including these ones that don't even have a switch. Well, you know it's got to be something with the whole line if it's showing all these ones that don't even exist and it's saying they're locked on. It's because the um, something's wrong with the wiring, which is probably one of the diodes. So we're going to check also on the fourth roll, a row, I'm sorry, the fourth diode um, to see if that has a problem. So if we're lucky, a diode on the fourth row and a diode on the sixth row. Have I got that right? One, two, a diode on the fourth row and the sixth row uh, will be messing up. Yeah, there's one row here that they don't use. Okay, so we're just gonna go in the back and check all the diodes with the multimeter. They're all one in 41, 48 diodes. All right, so I checked the diode board. There was absolutely nothing wrong with the diode board. And upon closer examination, if you look, the diode board is actually split in two. And if you look on the back, it's split in two as well. And the plugs are the exact same size, and everything's in the exact same place. So the diode board is actually two diode boards. So you can take that plug and put it in here and this plug and put it in there, and it will test the diode board for you. You know what I mean? So if you're having a problem and you don't know if it's the diode board, I just put, uh, I just used the multimeter and checked all of the diodes. They were all fine. But just to double check, I swapped the two plugs. 
because if so let's, so let's say that uh, you know the wire the the uh, strobe comes in on pin 10 here and it runs to that resistor and then it goes to all of the the diodes and pin 4 comes out and goes to the the switch that we were talking about well if you swap it down here it's the same thing the power comes through goes to the resistor and it comes out on the diode but you're using different diodes so it's a good way to Unless you had the exact same diode shorted up here that was shorted in the exact same place down here, if you swap the two connectors, since the board is identical, it's just two identical sets of diodes and uh, resistors. So I did that just to check, and yeah, same exact problem. So there's nothing wrong with that diode board. We can rule it out. Okay, and then I put it back the way it's supposed to be. But I think I found the problem. Let's look at the schematics first, and I'll show you something. So here's our car hit switch. You see the diode there on the diode board, and then there's a uh, connector, number 16, that uh, comes off of the diode board and then runs over to uh, another connector, which is that 2 and 2 there, and then another one that's that 1 and 1 there, and they're showing you right in the middle is a switch. So that's a connector, and that's a connector, and that's a switch. This is the little connector that we unplugged. Okay. So that's your typical switch, and you see like the one that says right hole, it's the same way. There's a diode on the diode board, and then a wire coming off the diode board, and then there is a switch on the right hole, and then it connects to this column, the return, right? But if you go down here to the bottom, it says switch 85 which I haven't found so that must just be a redundant one like switch 75 is and then see the little two little stars next to it and then it says left outside rollover left return rollover left stargate rollover right and it says stars Two stars denotes smart switch when used. So at the bottom, the left outside rollover, the left return rollover, and the left stargate rollover, which is switch B5, are smart switches. And look, they do not have a diode on the line because it's actually on the switch. Okay? And then if you come over here, this is our third line where we were having the problems. The right flipper and see it goes on the sensor board and all that stuff. Center spot target with the two stars, that's a smart switch. Center spot target number two with the two stars, that's a smart switch. Center spot target number three with the two stars, that's a smart switch. So this is the smart switch. We looked at that earlier. Basically when the ball rolls through, it moves the two blades. They don't actually even touch. Uh, it's uh, the the thing bending the board can sense and it blah 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 blah, blah. and it's got this new genius creation. I don't have any problem with them because they're they, you can still get them and you just swap in a new one if it's messed up. But it's just some high tech crap that they did, right? Smart switch. Do not adjust wide beam. It's the instruction manual. They got it all over the place. This was their new thing that they were going to do, right? Okay. So. When we got the game from the guy, one of the things he wanted us to do was replace these three ugly switches right here in the middle. Because he's saying that they should be red, yellow, red to make it look better on the game, right? Well, the reason those are so ugly is because they're not the original switches. If you look, someone has replaced all three of them. Let me brighten it up so you can see. And when they replace them, They just put regular switches in. They cut the connector off and just soldered to a regular switch. So why won't that work? It's because it doesn't have a diode on it. So you could fix those three switches by adding a diode or you could replace them with smart switches. So we're going to replace them with smart switches. The um, Since those don't have a diode, when you hit the switch it makes a bunch of other ones come on. Now, I don't know that it's doing both lines, though. I can see where it would mess up the third line, because those are on the third line. 
but I've unplugged everything on the car switch line and can't get that one. Uh, I can't fix that one. So, but it could be that that one is causing problems on the car switch line somehow as well. Um, I'm just not sure. So we're still tracking it down, but I think our our uh, what we really need to do is order those smart switches. Another thing I could do is temporarily I could unhook the three switches, and then by doing that, they couldn't you know play a factor, and we could see if that fixes our problem. Because right now, if I hold down the So I'm holding the top left hole and it's shorting that entire line out because the diodes are not present on those three switches because they're supposed to be smart switches which have a diode built onto the little board. Okay, yeah, so I'm going to get the soldering iron. I'm going to carefully take the wires off of the switches because they're not supposed to be in there and see if that fixes that line and see if just by luck it fixes the other line too. Okay, I disconnected the three switches and it didn't do anything. I didn't think about it, but as long as the switches weren't hit, it wouldn't have been doing anything anyway because it wouldn't be wouldn't have been connecting anything. However, they've been using them without diodes, so it could have screwed up the game board. Okay, folks, we're narrowing it down. I have made an amazing discovery. So there's the strobes and then the the returns so the strobes the first switch or the strobe the switch is on strobe one they all do that okay so one of them is the pop bumper is on one of the rows right so if i hold that it locks that whole row on but look what it says inner bracelet target outer bracelet target well those are on a different row so if i hit those they don't lock it on. It's only the ones on line one. So we were, uh, basically we have the car sensor. The only reason it's locking on is because when you lift the play field up, the, the ball is on the switch. Okay, or when I guess the play field's down, whatever. The ball's on the switch. Or I guess it, maybe it's when the car's moved or whatever. We'll figure that out later. But if it's, the, if it's one of the switches, on any of the rows that's in the first strobe, huh? right? The strobes don't have anything to do with the MPU board. So you were looking at that, doesn't have anything to do with it. The strobes go to the uh, driver board. So even though it's a new driver board, there must be something fried on one of those strobes, or it could be a light. We'll look at that in a minute. Uh, the left kicker is another row. So see the first number, see how it says, 0, 1, 11, 21, 31, all that. The first number, the 0, 1, 2, the one that's changing is the different rows, but it's always the first switch. Wait, I've got that wrong. <laughs> the, the second number is the row. The first number is the, is the uh, column. So if you hit any of the switches on the first strobe, not strobe 0, there is a strobe zero. On strobe one, it locks on that entire row on all of them. So see, by holding uh, switch 11 in, I get all of row, the trough and all that to lock on, right? Now, if I go over here to switch 12, it does the same thing. It locks that whole row on. The pop bumper is one. So if I hit the pop bumper, which is switch 10, it locks that whole row on. So the problem is on strobe one. So the way Gottlieb did their, um, their switches, they ran the strobes, the long line, the, the same strobes also control all of the bulbs. They have different columns, but the strobes, the, uh, the strobe lines do the bulbs too. So, if we look in the manual at all of the bulbs that are on um, the first strobe, if any of those have a shorted diode, 
or anything similar to that, it will make the same thing happen. So now we're going to, I'm going to make a list of all of the bulbs that are on the first strobe line and then we'll check all of them. Okay folks, I think I got it. So here are, this is strobe one, it does the pop bumper, the left kicker, the right kicker, the left hole, the right hole, and the car hit. So we had figured out that if you hit any of those on the first strobe, any of those switches, it would make all of the ones on that row lock on, right? But the, it also does the lights on both out lanes, both in lanes, the champion challenge, the bottom left hole, double, advanced torpedo, and E-Honda. Now the champion challenge, I forgot about that one. Okay, so it's these three lights, okay? And then it's these two lamps, those two lamps, and the champion challenge is the one in the middle here. All right, I left that one in. So here's what I did. If you unplug the lamp board, it doesn't change anything. You still have the problem, okay? But if you take out the bulbs in the in lane and the out lane, it fixes it. So now we're good. Like if I hit, right, it's on car hit right now, and it's not saying that there's 10 locked on. If I hit the left kicking rubber, it only shows the left kicking rubber. So one of these little light boards is screwed up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the bulbs back in one by one until we figure out which one's screwed up. Okay, so if I hit this left kicking rubber, it locks them all on. If I let go, they stop. It's this lamp. It's either this socket or it's this bulb. So if I take the bulb out, it's all up done. Now if I hit it, can you believe that? It's a freaking light bulb. I have seen it all, people. I have now seen it all. So let's see this light bulb. Now these are old ones. They haven't been replaced yet. Now the light works. The bulb lights up. Looks like there might be a little bit of something right there on the edge of it connecting the top and the bottom maybe but for whatever reason if this bulb is in there it trips the hell out now it, it may be the actual socket too so we're going to put a brand new bulb in it at the cost of 10 cents and see if that fixes the uh the machine i think it might so a new light bulb did not fix it. I don't know what's so special about this particular one. I mean, it looks fine. And it doesn't test shorted across that diode. Hmm. But something is wrong with this freaking socket. So you see how, they, how it works. Basically, the outside touches this, which is kind of press fit down to here and touches this side which goes through the diode which tests fine and diode check and then the other side goes through here um oh wait well hmm hmm what are they doing here Yeah, I guess that's that's right. So it goes through there. Well, wait a minute. One side of the diode is connected to there. The other side of the diode is connected to there. Hmm. I don't know, people. I don't know. When I test the diode, it's not shorted across the diode. The wire is connected to here, um, and then the other wire is soldered to the base, which is how they're all done. I can't find anything that's different about this one. So the only thing I can think is that the diode is breaking down when voltage is actually going through it, so I'm going to swap the diode, and then we'll try it again, and uh, just see if... 
I'll try it without the whole thing in there, just to see if it works fine without it, which I guess it will because it worked fine if I take the bulb out. Um, and then I'll uh, I'll try it with a different diode in here, see if that fixes that board. But the diode tests fine, uh, so we'll see. Okay, folks, so we swapped the diode, put it back in, the light is in, light is working, and they don't lock on anymore. Isn't that cool? Fixed it. So the whole problem with all of the switches, the whole switch matrix was messed up because that diode was bad but didn't test bad. So I guess the diode lets the voltage go one way but not the other way and so it must have let the voltage go this way but then once the switch opened up or whatever it did somehow it was locking on every the entire uh, I don't know something I don't know I have no clue how that was working it's a matrix it's the matrix they call it that for a reason people okay so um so we got all the lights fixed. We got all the switches fixed. Now one of the coolest parts of the machine is there is a flipper up here that can spin around like Chun-Li does. Now Chun-Li, uh, one of the characters in Street Fighter 2, if you've ever played it, she had this move where she turns upside down and spins around kicking you. So this flipper is supposed to spin around. But uh, unfortunately it don't do a thing. So um, there's a big motor underneath it that goes up through the play field and then there's a coupling right there that connects the shaft of the motor to the bottom of this flipper um, and that's what spins it around and whenever you start it it's not doing anything it doesn't even try to spin around so um, we got to figure that out we have to get it where uh, where Chun Li's doing her thing she's one of the coolest characters in the game so I'm going to pull the, the uh, motor out of the game, and we'll go put it on the bench and check it out. Okay, folks, so this is the motor and the gearbox off of it. And uh, he said he put a new one on it. I don't know, though, if the gearbox is new or just the motor. But I think what's going on is, if you look, there's all this... It's like there's solder all over the, the uh, rotor. I don't know why it would be like that, but it is. But if you turn it, you can barely turn it with your hand, and the gearbox is working. It is turning the shaft, but it's just really tough to turn. And the um, I checked the power. There's 50 volts going up to it, so it should be turning. But So what I did was I took it off the machine. I'm going to clean this up to where I can turn it by hand, and then once I get it like that, we can just plug it in and see if we can get it to turn without anything hooked up to it. And then once we get it all where it's moving good, we'll put it back in the thing. I've seen before where if you've got a gearbox that's been laying around for a long time, it'll get just stuck, and you just need to work it a little bit and get it to where it'll move. So I think that's probably what's going on, at least that's what I hope. Um, but the motor part is definitely new. I just don't know if the gearbox is. Um, so uh, I think I'm going to take the gearbox off, of, the motor off of it, clean it up a little bit, and then put it back. All right, folks, so I oiled up here and down here, but I didn't oil. You don't want to oil the actual rotor as it goes through the stator. But I've got it so loose now that when you turn this, it actually spins the thing. So I bet that's going to fix it. It was just seized up probably because it's brand new and needed to be worked with a little bit. So we got a little oil on the gears. I couldn't open the gearbox, and I can't get the motor off of it. So he must have bought this the whole thing brand new, gearbox and everything. It just needed a little... Uh, playing with to get it to break loose the voltage itself isn't always enough to get it to start spinning see look it's doing good now and I'm doing it backwards I'm doing it from the flipper so you probably could have got it to work by just grabbing the flipper and turning it but I'd hate to do that it might break something um, but we're good now we got the oil on it look at that look at her go heck yeah all right so I'm gonna bolt it back in Okay, folks, we got it all mounted back in. This is where it plugs up, and it's actually controlled by this relay. So this relay, uh, the connections were all pitted, too. Since there's AC running through it, it's ran off 50 volts AC. Since there's uh, AC running through it, the, the contacts get all pitted up. So, got that all where it moves smooth. 
and then cleaned the contacts on the relay. Made sure all the connections were fine, made sure the fuse was the right size in the bottom, and... We're smoking. We're smoking, people, we're smoking. Whenever we replace that little mini play field, we'll see if, uh, we'll make sure that it's not hitting it. it does, I mean, it's nowhere near hitting it right now, but something, it must have been dragging the play field at some point because it's all worn. But, uh... Nice and strong. All right, so we fixed the motor. Um, I guess I'll go into the test menu and make sure that the relay works uh, whenever the game tells it to. All right, we're in solenoid test. It just turns it on for a second. You can hear the relay clicking, but it's doing its thing. Love it, love it, love it. Um, so there we go. So we've got that, I think, taken care of. Now we're going to end up taking that back off because we're going to replace that little play field up there underneath it. But we got the motor fixed. One last thing. All right, folks, so she's up and playing, but it still needs a whole bunch of service work. The flipper, uh, the fuse is blowing on it so the flipper doesn't work right. Um, and uh, there's just some, some gameplay things that need adjusted and things like that. So uh, we're almost there. we got to do some cosmetic stuff too, but... It's making a good, uh, we were early. There's the flipper, I mean, the spinning flipper. <laughs> the shoot again, too. I don't know if it should have been doing that earlier. So we might need a little work on that. So we got more work to do, but uh, we'll get there next time. Make sure to check out our website. Go to lionsarcade.com. We have prices, pictures, and descriptions of all of the arcade games, pinball machines, jukeboxes, and stuff that we have for sale right now and that are coming up. Um, uh, also, make sure to check out my brother Donnie here on YouTube. If you don't know about that, my brother Donnie is my actual brother. And if you like watching us work on these old pinball machines, you'd probably love watching Donnie and I work on old buildings. We bought a couple buildings in a Sonic small Boom. town near here. Sonic Boom. We bought a couple buildings in a small town near here uh, that we are fixing up. Uh, just trying to get the uh, uh, um, help revitalize downtown. So leave your comments below. Let us know what you think so far. And we will see you on the next video. Hopefully we can play it next time. See you then.